morning and praise the Lord everybody for this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it um, I want to welcome you uh, again back to uh, bread and breakfast our bread and breakfast service uh, we have this morning service at 9 a.m every Sunday um, I have to admit this is my disclaimer um, there has been a few weeks that I haven't been able to get on here live and so I apologize uh, for those who come in and who tap in for the service. Um, last week, I was out of town and I was in a place where I just could not get um, the connection that I needed to. And so um, I do want to apologize for that because I know some people do love uh, to have a, a good word and a quick word in the morning um, as they're getting ready for service or wherever that you're about to go, um, whether it be work, whether it be whatever that thing is. Um, I'm happy to be a person who can give you a little meal, a little manna uh, before you go to that place that you are going to. And so, uh, again, I thank God for you. And I appreciate those who are taking time out to hear a word and to get what I believe God is saying and speaking to you and to myself. Um, again, my name is Pastor Billy Bird. I am the um, I have so many roles, but I will say the executive youth pastors and the mission pastor of House of Prayer Evangelistic Church, where our pastor is no other than Bishop Bernard Crawford Jr. And our first lady, of course, is Prophetess Trina Crawford. Again, as always, bringing glad tidings from Hope Church, House of Prayer Evangelistic Church, where we are a church who brings hope to the community. <clears throat> I'm excited about what God is doing. Um, we had, again, just coming back from out of town. Um, able to go and just um, do some great things. Uh, wanted to do more mission work um, this year. And so that's something that we wanted to do. But that's one of the things that we do when we go out of town in certain areas. Uh, we're able to go in and, and give back to the communities. And so God has been good in those areas. Um, I am so joyful also that um, I want you guys to tune into and those who can be with me for the virtual. We have a virtual um, single release. For notice me. Uh, I want y'all to save the date, which is going to be uh, December the 13th. It is on a Friday. It is virtual. So you can come on Facebook Live, Instagram, YouTube. It's going to be live. But I want you to come in. We're going to have a, rat, a red carpet uh, type of thing. Even We're going to even have some giveaways. So if you own there, we're going to give some, some things away um, to those who um, who tap into and, and those who view this virtual CD or should I say virtual single release. Um, it's an awesome song. My little brother Tremaine Long wrote and produced. And, um, and I just believe God is really in it all the way. And I believe that it will bless you and bless others. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm on my little soap stool right now. But we're going to get into today's word. Um, today's word, I believe, is so um, needed for us <clears throat> as believers and non-believers. Um, those who are going through struggling, even the backsliders, whoever you are today. This, I believe, today's word, this message is for you. Today's message is, is uh, entitled Navigating Social Media Responsibly. We'll get, go into more detail on that. But again, just go with me with that. Navigating Social Media Responsibly. Um, if you would, we're going to go to the throne of grace. We're going to pray and we're going to get into today's word. Uh, Heavenly Father, as always, we give thanks to you. Uh, we thank you for being a God, um, our King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Lord, we thank you for being the beginning and the end. Lord, we thank you for being above and not beneath, which you've given us the same duty, Lord God, for you are a giver. You're one who gives beyond, Lord. And we thank you. And we thank you that you are one who looks again, always looks beyond our faults and see our needs. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity again to be able to come and to commute with you, commune with you, Lord, and assemble in your name. Lord, and I thank you for your word today that I believe that it's going to touch many of lives. Lord, I'm asking that you would move me aside 
that they may hear you and see you for who you are, that you may be glorified. For you told us to let our light so shine before men that, that they will see our good works, but you, our Father, will be glorified. We thank you for this opportunity. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we're talking about navigating social media responsibly. When, we, when I look at this um, message today, it is so important because I would say, and I would just go on the record and say 90% of, of Americans and beyond, about 90% has some type of social media platform that, that, we, that we're on. And when we're on there and we're navigating, um, I would say that it has become a major part of our lives. I'm, a, I'm just going to put a pin in that. Because I know it, it has been because a lot of us, we get our news from there. We get our gossip from there. We get our gospel from um, social media. We get our music. We get our TV. We have so many things that we do. A lot of us work from home from even through social media. We, we, uh, we, we do commercial. Uh, our, we commercialize our activities and whatever that we do through social media, through this platform. So. I, that's probably a low ball saying 90, but I'm just going to say 90% of us, even those who daily say I'm leaving or I'm dropping my social media, I'm, I've been on here too much. Most of us are on <clears throat> social media daily, which means it is a major part of our lives. Look, it offers numerous benefits, no question about it, but it also presents challenges that require us to navigate it responsibly. As believers, and I'm talking to the believers right now, we can turn to the Bible for guidance on how to use social media in a way that it honors God and it uplifts others. Now, I'm going to say this again. As believers, Christians, followers of Christ. So I have to go all the way because sometimes we get crazy and act like I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those who follow Jesus Christ the disciples, those who are disciples, those who are following Christ today. <clears throat> Today's word is telling us that we can use the Bible to give us guidance of how to use social media in such a way that it honors God, it un honors God, I'm sorry, and it uplifts others. So somebody's saying, well, how can we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you because there's so many scriptures and there's so many things that we can do that can make it where we are doing what is right before others on social media. Um, sometimes, and, and let's just be honest, um, we have some hard days. We have some things that go on in our mind or we have people who have come against us. And no matter what we are and, and who we are, sometimes we get off. But I want to challenge you today to, that we stay on our square. In other words, that we stay the course even when it's not popular, even when it looks like it's going another direction, our, our, our conversations or people are negative against us. I am challenging you today that you stay the course, that you navigate the social media platform responsibly. The reason why I say this is because, and, and we hear this saying all the time, but it's the honest truth. We are the only Jesus that some people are going to read. We're the only platform that people are going to see and relate and be related to Jesus Christ. And so how we move and how we care ourselves is very important. So if you look at me and you look at my platform or you see me, I don't do a lot on there. So I'm probably pretty boring besides my music. So most of the things that I'm doing I don't even have a lot of family stuff on mine because to me, a lot of that is for me. I do a lot of what I what I do for the church on there because I want to push Christ as much. And we know the family is part of that. But some of the things that we do and for me is more personal. But I want to say this. We have to be responsible of how we navigate on social media. I can't say it enough. One of the first things that I can say that we can do that's going to help us, and this is we have scripture that will help us through this, is first we must guard our hearts and mind. 
If we look at Proverbs 4 and 23, this is how I reads in NIV. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. And so it's so important that we guard our hearts, even concerning social media. Why? Because social media can be a source, both inspirational and temptational, or should I say with inspiration or with temptation. It is so crucial. And I'm going to say that it's crucial to be mindful of the content that we consume and that we share. We must guard our hearts and our minds. We can ensure, look, and if we do, we can ensure that we see the post and we can look at these posts and we can make sure that it aligns with our values and our faith. That's what our job is as believers. This means being selective about the accounts we follow and the conversations we engage in and help. it will help us avoid negative and harmful influences. So if we are guarding our hearts and our mind and we're really protecting that thing, that's going to continue to have us to align up and align with our faith and our values of what God has given us as believers. So if we come on Facebook, we have to, no matter what we're going through that day, I don't care if we got fired. I don't care if we lost our homes. I don't care if such and such has said this, that, and the other. I'm just speaking it because God is speaking to me first before I give you this message. He's speaking to me saying, Billy, these are the things that you must do. So I'm just conveying this to you as believers and as family and as friends that we can help each other so that we can navigate through this social media so we don't look so bad. This is this year has been one of the first years, and I know it's, it's going on before, but for me, it's one of the first years where I've seen so much negative negativity towards believers on social media. And I'm talking about just all of the mess that's going on, but a lot of it is we bring it to our platforms. And then when people come against us or when people do, look, we're already going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. But let's not make it because of us, of things that we've done to ourselves. So we must guard our hearts and our minds so that we can navigate responsibly, so that we can help others, so that our values show in our faith and what we align with daily. So the first thing is, is what should we do? Guard our hearts and minds. Because why? Because the issues of it flows through our heart. That is us. It flows from our heart. That means, again, everything that we do from our hearts, that means above all, guard our hearts and our mind. Why? For everything that we do, it flows from it. It flows from it. And when it flows from the mind, that's why we say the heart and mind are one, because it flows from it. And so where our heart is, is where we are. So we have to really be careful on what we take in and what the values that we have and what we align up with because it can make us look foolish. And we wonder why people won't follow us or why people are looking at, at us in such a bad way. It's because we're not guarding our hearts and mind and our values and our faith is not lining up with God. Excuse me. Secondly, we must speak the truth in love. I'm going to say it again. Speak the truth in love, not speak the truth with feelings, not speak the truth in um, where I'm at today. We must speak the truth in love. In, in Ephesians 4 and 15, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Now, if you read this scripture, it's really letting us know that if we are speaking the truth in love, then look, it tells us that we will grow and become everything in respect and mature, become a mature body of him who is the head, which is Christ. Look, social media platforms often become battlefields 
for heated debates and harsh words. Come on, somebody go with me on that. It becomes a harsh battle. We got battles and it becomes a thing of harsh words. As Christians, we are called to speak the truth. Now, when I'm saying speaking the truth, I'm not talking about where we just come because we know the truth that we come out and we hurt somebody. It's telling us to do it in love. So that means when we are even thinking about how we're going to convey God's word or how we're going to speak the truth to someone, we still have to do it in the manner of the love of Christ. So in that, as Christians, we are called to speak the truth, but do it, do so in love. This means being respectful and kind in our interactions, even when we disagree with others. I know that's hard because a lot of times when we disagree, we want to be so right that it's hard for us to deal with people and to deal with people in love because we want to be seen as right. But when God is telling us, he's telling us to speak the truth in love. He's telling us that we must still, when we hear that saying a lot of times, agree to disagree. Sometimes we have to, in love, know how that even if they don't take it in at that time, still do it in a loveful manner. This means being respectful and kind in our interactions, even when we disagree with others. Our words should build up and not tear down. Reflecting the love of Christ is every, in every post and comment. So as believers, our job with our comments, when we are reflecting in our posts, it should reflect God. So when people hear us and we're coming out and we're saying certain things, it should reflect of what God looks like to others. It looks, it should look like for us first, but that should reflect, be a reflection. It should mirror Christ. So we're believers. And if it's mirroring something else, that means we're not lining up. Am I perfect? No, no, no. But I am. And when I say I'm not perfect, what I'm saying is I'm not perfect as Christ is, as man sees. But I am perfect in Christ, which means I am being matured in Christ. When God talks about, when we look at the scriptures and we look at the Greek and we look at the terms of perfect, we're not talking about the perfect God because perfect God is perfect. He's telling us that we must mature. That's the perfection that he's asking. Those are the things that we need to do, be moving towards perfecting ourselves through Christ. So in that, when we're doing this, we must reflect who Christ is in our post and our comments. That's how we learn how to navigate responsibly on social media. Number three, we should promote positivity and encouragement. So the, the opposite of that is, is promoting negativity and discouragement. Our job is to be positive and encouraging to others. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. So we have to know that it's important for us to be positive and encouraging to others, even those ones who we may have a problem with. Our job as believers is to build up and to enlighten them positively and encourage them. Social media can be powerful. It can be a powerful tool, but also <clears throat> it is a way of spreading positive and encouragement, positively and encouragement to others. We can use our platforms to share uplifting messages, but also support others while we are doing what we do. Look and highlight the good in the world. So a lot of times we find ourselves, and let's just be honest, we can find ourselves because of the, the, this dark world of speaking so negatively. So we become pessimists instead of being optimistic. And so when we do this, we also do it so much that others begin to be negative and be pessimists because of us sometimes. 
So we got to learn how to be positive and encouraging even unto the world, even unto the unbelievers. Look, by focusing on the positive, we can do what? We can counteract the negativity, the negativity that, that oft, often tries to persuade us on social media and create a more uplifting online community. <clears throat> That's what my job is today. My job is, <clears throat> sorry, through the bread and breakfast, through this nine o'clock service, is to uplift you, encourage you to be positive so that you can spread this gospel, so that you can tell people about the good news, tell people about Jesus Christ, tell them about the goodness of the Lord, and talk about <clears throat> how we can uplift each other as we navigate through this social media. So many people hate social media because of the people, not because of social media, because social media can be used good or bad, but they don't like it because of how it's being used. One of the last things that I want to talk about, <clears throat> and this is so important, four is practice self-control and discernment. What does that mean? Well, in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, uh, uh, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So in this, God is not holding us back on any of these things. Why? Because these are come from his spirit. These are the fruits of the spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And because it is, there is no law for it, which means there's nothing binding us or holding us back from doing these things. So it means he's given us love, joy, peace, forbearance, uh, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So he's given us these things so that we can help each other out and build each other. up. Look, it's easy to get caught up in the endless scroll of social media, but practicing self-control and discernment is necessary. That means it is essential as a believer. Should be for everybody, but I'm saying for us as believers, it is essential that we show self-control, practicing discernment. In other words, and when we when we think about discernment, that means we're seeing things. God is giving us a eyesight, giving us a sight of things even before time. It's almost like prophecy, but he gives us a discernment so that we can see things before things are going on so that we know how to handle ourselves with self-control as we go onto social medias and beyond social media. We are to set boundaries for our social media use, such as limiting screen time, that means not being on there all the time and taking regular breaks. I'm going to say it again, taking some time off, y'all, so that we're not always on social media. <clears throat> we must discern what content is worth our time and attention and avoid getting drawn into unproductive, harmful interactions. And I don't know about you. But I'm just going to keep it all the way 100. I've been on social media and I'm scrolling through and it's easy to do. And something comes on and it just pulls you away from all of those great things that you were just doing. And it can be cussing. It can be fighting. It can be women gyrating. It can be a man doing this. It could be whatever. I'm saying whatever that thing is, it. That evilness can draw your eye away from what God is trying to draw us to. And just in that moment, it can draw us away. And then the next post and then the next post and the next post. And you find yourself clicking. And as you're clicking, you're going to all of these things that are not what God has called us to. And it throws us all the way off. And now our mindset has changed. So God is letting us know that when we are discerning and we're looking into the content that we're looking at, we must stay the course. We must stay on that and not 
from the algorithms or algorithms, however they pronounce it, those things tend to go off of the things that we click on all the time. Even those things also, if we go in there and you shop about, shop on something, if you notice it's on social media because it goes with the algorithm and it pulls everything in and now you start seeing these things. So if you're watching negative stuff, it's going to constantly throw negative things at you. If it's positive, it's going to constantly throw positive. But also, if you click on one thing, it'll pull away from that thing and have you go in a whole nother direction. That's why it's so important for us to stay the course and stay away from the unpro unproductive and, and harmful interactions. Let the fruits of the spirits guide us through our lives and online behaviors. Again, we're talking about social media, y'all, but this will help us even in our lives. This goes beyond just social media. This is talking about our lives in general, of how we should carry ourselves and how we need to do what we need to do on these platforms. Now I'm gonna close on this. Navigating social media is so is, is so important because we have to be responsible for how we carry ourselves on social media. Look, it requires intentional, and when I say intentional, I'm talking about intentional and, I mean, uh, our, our, it requires, how can I say this? Um, it requires us, yes, to be intentional in what we do daily. And we must be committed to living our, our, our lives faithfully on these digital trends, on these digital platforms. Look, by guarding our hearts, and speaking the truth in love, promoting positivity, and practicing self-control, we can use social media as a force for good. Let us strive to reflect Christ in all our online interactions, bringing light to the digital spaces and places we are on daily. Some of us can't help ourselves but be on daily. And because we're on there, we must be responsible for how we navigate on social media. I know this is different, but this is how God, this is what God is doing. He's giving me these different um, messages because these are things that we deal with every day. I'm hoping that someone is taking in the things that God is telling us to do. Again, let's go back. One of the first things we need to do is guard our hearts and our minds. Second, speak the truth in love while we're on social media. Even when it's not popular, it don't seem popular, we must speak the truth in love. We must promote positivity and encouragement on these on social media. And the last thing, practice self-control and discernment so that we can be who God has called us to be at all times. Again, my name is Pastor Billy Bird. For those who have just come in, I am uh, one of the leaders at House of Prayer Evangelistic Church, and uh, which we call the Hope Church, bringing hope to the community. Again, um, just giving you a little man, a little something, a uh, rim of word um, before you go to whatever that place is that you have in, that God has in store for you today. I'm hoping that you take this in and help tell somebody about it. Come back. I'll see you next week at 9 a.m. for our bread and breakfast service. We thank you and we love you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for teaching us to guard our hearts and our mind, but also not just guarding our hearts and mind. Lord, you have showed us that we should do more than guarding our hearts. We must speak the truth in love. Also promote positivity and encouragement with all these things, we must also have self-control. You have told us to be to show our self-control and discernment as we're on social media. Lord, I'm asking that you would guide us and keep us, give us direction, understanding of what we should do, when we should do it. That we don't be the negative uh, people on the social platforms, Lord, but that we be that we be positive, that we be optimistic on our views. Lord, that we mirror you in all your ways that many people would come running asking, what must they do to be saved? Lord, this is our job as believers, and we thank you for it. 
And God, I'm asking that you would keep us and protect us, Lord God, as we go through the rest of this day, as we worship in, throughout this next part of our service today. Lord God, that you may be glorified in all we say and do. We thank you for it all. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all.